Okay, welcome to the first lecture on the first topic in uh, ISC 070, which is going to be about the nature of light. Um, now, the, exactly what the nature of light is, this topic goes back thousands of years. There's all sorts of theories. We go through a whole bunch of history about this. But uh, for the purposes that we're interested in, uh, the, the history of the nature of light really starts with a, a famous Dutchman. Um, not that one. This one, uh, the Dutch physicist Christian Huygens. Um, Huygens put forth the theory of the nature of light saying that light is a wave, that it propagates through some medium in the same sort of manner that sound or water waves do. Uh, and a crucial piece of this is he said that, that every point in space that the wave reaches becomes a new source of waves. So each individual point uh, emits a set of waves that travel out from that point. And all of those waves add up together in a way that gives you the uh, continuation of the wave. Now, this works great. This is exactly what happens in the case of water waves and sound waves. Um, and Huygens wanted to extend this idea to, to the nature of light and understanding light as a source of, of new waves. So Huygens' uh, theory uh, explained a lot of the phenomena that we see in optics. Uh, in particular, it explained why waves, why light bends as, as it enters glass, um, which is that the speed of the wave decreases in the medium. Uh, that changes uh, how, how fast the waves propagate, which means they catch up to each other at different points and you get a different angle of propagation on entering a new medium. The one problem that he had with the theory of light as a wave is that it really couldn't readily accommodate effects of polarization of light. This is the uh, property of light that has two different states that, you know, this is what makes polarized sunglasses a thing. Right? Light that's polarized in one direction can pass through the glasses. Light that's polarized in the opposite direction does not. You can use this to cut down on glare from roads and lakes and, and so on. Uh, and that's a whole other topic that we're really not going to get into. Huygens had this, this wave theory that he put forward. It wasn't completely successful, but was promoted by a number of other people, uh, including the, the Swiss mathematician uh, Leonard Euler. That's uh, Euler with an E, E-U-L-E-R. Uh, who is a uh, very famous mathematician is all over everything. Uh, in competition with the Huygens wave theory, there was a, a different theory that was, was first put forward by uh, some atomist philosophers, uh, in particular these two gentlemen. Um, one of the great tragedies of the historical portion of this class is that you're going to have to listen to me attempt to pronounce French names. So apologies to anyone who, who can actually speak French. Um, these two fellows are, are Pierre Gassendi and uh, René Descartes, uh, who are French philosophers who uh, subscribe to an atomist view of the world, that the world is made up of, of, of tiny little particles, and they felt that this could be carried over to the nature of light as well. Uh, the most prominent proponent of this theory ended up being uh, this fellow, uh, Sir Isaac Newton, in his book on optics, published in 1704, uh, spelled sort of differently at the time. Um, and Newton put forth uh, an enormous array of phenomena having to do with the behavior of light, uh, the reflection, refraction, uh, the colors, the bending of light under various circumstances. And his theory of the nature of light is that light is a particle. Uh, so he viewed light as a stream of particles. These are particles that behave pretty much exactly like ordinary particles. They move at a finite speed, so they, they don't travel infinitely fast. They take some time to get places. Uh, and this is consistent with experiments uh, done by the astronomer Ole Romer in about 1676. Um, and uh, Newton could explain the bending of light in glass as a, an increase in the speed of the particles as they entered the glass. So the particles were drawn into the glass. They sped up as they as they came in, uh, and as a result, the, the particles would uh, bend their direction, and you would get a, a change in the path. Um, Newton's theory also allowed for a better explanation of polarization phenomena than you could get with Huygens' wave theory. Um, he basically had an analogy uh, between properties of these light particles and properties of, of ordinary material particles. So, for example, the color of the light was defined by how much it bent on entering glass. And that was sort of behaved analogous to the mass of an ordinary particle. How, how hard is it to move? Right? Things that bent less were harder to move. Um, 
He also could explain polarization phenomena by saying that these particles were not, were not spherical. They're not round, but they're sort of elongated, and that would give you a way to have them um, have two sort of characteristic directions, right? Ones that are oriented this way uh, can pass through some materials, while ones that are oriented in the opposite direction are blocked. Uh, that gives a really nice way of explaining polarization phenomena, and that was really the biggest success of Newton's corpuscular theory of light. And just as a note, corpuscular is a great word. So these are the two competing models of light uh, through the 1700s. You have Huygens' wave theory, uh, which is further promoted by, by Euler and other people on the European continent. And you have Newton's particle theory, which is mostly promoted in, in Britain. Uh, and Newton is a, is a titan of physics, right? He's the guy who invented physics as a mat mathematical science. So his opinion really carried a lot of weight. And so people... We're largely going with the particle theory of light, but the wave theory was kind of hanging around and, and, there, and it was always there in the background. Um, and eventually this became, the wave theory is the thing that, that people ended up settling on as the true nature of light. And that has to do with experiments done by this fellow here, the English polymath, Thomas Young. Uh, Young is, is a medical doctor. Uh, he also um, made some seminal contributions to linguistics. He, he played some small role in, in deciphering Egyptian hieroglyphs. Um, so so had dabbled in lots and lots of different fields, among them physics. Uh, and his most important contribution is a series of experiments he did right around 1800 that conclusively end up demonstrating the wave nature of light. Great thing about these experiments, particularly in the context of this course and the unfortunate situation we find ourselves in, is that they're very simple. Um, Jung's presentation of these experiments, he, he says this uh, flat out, saying that the experiments I'm about to relate may be repeated with great ease where it, whenever the sun shines and without any other apparatus than is, to ha than is at hand to everyone that I can talk. This is from a report on the experiment that he, he presented in, in 1804 uh, and, and talks about his, his most famous result, which is demonstrating the wave nature of light by putting a small slip of card into a beam. So here's a, a bit of the description of uh, Young's experiment from his own work. He said he made a small hole in a window shutter, allowed uh, sunlight to come through. He directed that sunlight across the room and uh, so he had a, a cone of diverging light, and he put a little piece of, of paper into the path of that beam on edge on. Right? Then he looked at the shadow that was created as the, the light passed to either side of that small card uh, and produced you know, two smaller expanding cones on the far side that overlap with each other. And that overlap is the crucial bit of this. Right. If you think about that overlap in terms of light behaving like particles, you would have one expectation for what should happen. If you think about that in terms of light behaving like waves, you see something very different. And what Jung saw was the phenomenon that you would expect to see if the light is behaving like a wave. So you have sources of waves passing around either side of this. Now this is the experiment we're gonna ask you to do at home as a lab for this course. Um, we're not asking you to, to, to make a hole in your window shutter and, and let uh, beams pass through it. Uh, instead, we're gonna ask you to do some, some simple experimentation using a, a laser pointer and some obstacles. And that will be the next video that's on the site. I'll have an instruction video telling you how to do the lab activity. Then there will be an assignment that asks you to report on your, um, on your findings from doing that activity and upload a, a photo of, of your results of what you get when you do this young type experiment. Um, after you complete that, then there'll be yet another video that explains exactly what does this all mean and you know, why do you see the things that you see when you do Young's experiment and how does that convince everybody that light actually behaves like a wave, not like a stream of particles. So uh, that's it for this video. Uh, you'll need to answer a couple of questions about this on Nexus. And then the next video will be instructions on how to do the lab, uh, which will not be here in my office. It'll be in my uh, basement lab at home. 
And then um, there will be some assignments and then a, an unlockable uh, and video explaining how all of this works. So um, that's it for this, this particular lecture. And um, good luck with those, those next things. And we'll see you when we see you.